Okay, we have this word problem. 900 feet of fencing is available, and we're going to close a rectangular field that borders a river. So because of that, the river forms one side boundary, so we only need fencing on the other three sides. What dimensions will enclose the largest area? And it also says what is the maximum area. Okay, so these kind of problems from this section that involve the word minimum and maximum what you have to do is you want to find a quadratic equation, since that's the section this comes from. And then once we have that quadratic equation, then you want to apply the vertex formula, that's the negative b over 2a, that gives you the x-coordinate of your vertex. So that's what you want to do on this one. So first we have to come up with the equation to use first. So we have a, a uh, river here and we have our three sides. Okay, so again, the river is a natural boundary on the fourth side, so that's why we don't need a fence along there because the river will take that place. So we just need fencing here on the other three sides. We wanna uh, set up some variables. I'm gonna use X and Y here. You could switch them, it doesn't matter, but these are the ones I'm gonna use. So I have two X's and I have one Y. So we wanna come up with a, a couple, some formulas and then we're going to plug one into the other and solve and get the answer. The first one is since it's asking us for area, based on our picture, we have area equals x times y. And that's fine, except that I have an extra y here and I, I can't really do anything with this formula in this form. So I want to use some other information that's provided. They do give me this 900 feet, which means it's probably important, I need to use it. So 900 feet relates to the amount of material that's used to create these three sides. So, in the case here, I have two x's and I have one y, and if I add that together, I should get 900. So that's the second equation here. This is kind of like a perimeter in a way, because you're looking at the other three sides. So I have, I have two x's, one y, that added together should equal 900. So, what I need to do now is take this one and I need to substitute it into the first one because if I can get rid of the y and have it all in terms of one variable, that would be easier. Now, you could actually solve for x or you could solve for y here as long as you get one variable left here in the area formula. But it's probably going to be easiest to solve for y because if you try and solve for x, then you're going to be involving a fraction there. So I'm going to solve for this one here. So what I'll do is I want to solve this for y, which means that I'm just going to take the 2x cross the equal sign, so y equals 900 minus 2x. Now that I have this, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it into the first formula in place of the y. By doing that, I'll get one variable only. So I get a equals x times, instead of the y, I'm going to put 900 minus 2x. Now I have an area formula that has one variable and if I multiply it out, I get 900x minus 2x squared. That's the quadratic that I'm going to look for. That's the one I'm going to be working with with the negative b over 2a formula. So when you label this, you've got to be careful. Your b is going to be in front of the x term without the square. Your a has to be the one in front of the, the square term. So be careful when you put those numbers in. I get x equals, it's negative b over 2a as a formula. So I'm going to do negative 900 over 2 times negative 2. Okay. Notice that I get the two negatives in there and they're going to cancel. Now if you did this and you end up getting a negative answer, you want to go back and check because the way we have this set up here, it's impossible for us to have a negative side for something, at least in this dimension. So what you want to do is be careful that, you know, look at, look at make sure, see if your answer makes sense with that. So uh, for this one, if you uh, divide that, you're going to get 225. So that's one of our values. It's asking for dimensions. So dimensions means they're looking for the x and the y. I found the x here. I can also find the y. We have this formula that we did previously that will allow us to find the y. So we're going to do 900 minus 2 times 225 and that's going to give us 450. So that answers this question. Which dimensions will enclose the largest area? If x is 225 and y is 450 then that's going to be the uh, dimensions. That's what each side has to be 
to where it'll allow the most space on the inside. So I'm using my 900 feet most effectively because I'm creating the most space on the inside. Now the last question says, what's the maximum area? You could do this one of two ways. You could take 225 and you could put it right inside this equation right here and that'll give you the maximum area. What you also could do is, we have another formula for area, that's x times y, and we have both these values. Here's our x and here's our y. So you could just do 225 times 450 also, and that's gonna allow you to get the same answer. So either way, you're gonna get 101, 250, that'll be feet squared, and that right there would be the maximum area that can be enclosed if x is 225 and y is 450.